Welcome to the Always Right Podcast. I want to let you know this is a no underwear zone. Well, I mean, actually, really, there's what? underwear, but we're just not going to show it on the podcast. Oh, because Jamie was standing up, and I was like, oh, let's stop recording so I don't have your thong on here. <laughs> and for those who don't know, he records in all his underwear. Uh, yeah, and that didn't come out right. This is no underwear zone. Please wear your underwear. Underwear zone. Just don't show it on the podcast. Right. All right. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes, all right. Really well, here. interesting day. All right. Yeah. So even though this is airing two weeks after the book launches, so this morning we got on there and loaded in Kate, uh, Catherine Horsley's book. So her book will be available to everybody. Yep. Daylight Awakens. So yes. through the printing company, it's already out in Kindle. Yep. And maybe out by the time this podcast is out. It will be because this one's coming out. So when this episode comes out, I will be in Jolly Old London. And you will be finishing up all your notes and getting ready for Age of the Sigil to be done because I'm giving you a week off. <laughs> and yeah. so you won't have to be doing anything with me. I've got all my notes, but it's a lot of compilation to the point that, like I, I might have said it on another podcast, I'm going to release a guide to Age of the Sigil because mm -hmm. I'm looking through this. I'm like, how in the world did I come up with all this stuff? And there's all these uh, uh, character arcs back and forth and keeping track of some names. And it's just, yes, it's a lot to it. Yeah. All right. All right. So to get the podcast started, our topic today is we're going to discuss books versus TV and movie versions or renditions and, you know, the takes on it. So we're going to go through pros and cons. We're going to go through our thought processes, what we think. Do we like movies better? Do we like books better? Give our own personal opinions. And then we're going to talk about how we, as writers, write our books. Do we write them like movies and TV series type things? Or do we keep them kind of literature-based? So, I was off, like, wow, I didn't even think of that earlier when we were talking about this. You're such a dork. <laughs> That's what I tell my students. When they're like, I'm kind of scared to be singing in front of you. I'm like, in a week, you're going to realize I'm the biggest dork you've ever met, and it'll be all fine. And every time, mm -hmm. I'm like, you're right. It's so cool. It's so easy. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's not too uh, – that don't work for me. All right. Never mind. Back to the podcast. <laughs> so, you know, I always heard um, the the movies uh, – the book is always better than the movie or the TV. And I'm sure that's I, – I mean, I can't even think of a case where it would be the other way around. Like, that movie smoked the book. It's just – Well, so I'm kind of like – okay, so would you say you love the books more than the movies? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and as we were thinking about this, I couldn't really – I couldn't really think of a – a bunch of comparisons. Uh, the one I, that really stuck out to me is I love Terry Brooks, the Shannara series. And so they came up with the Shannara uh, Chronicles. They might call it Shannara Chronicles. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it. So they did this TV show for MTV for two seasons. And I absolutely loved it. But mm -hmm. it was so loosely based on the books on that first season. Mm -hmm. Second season, completely new story. So that's why I loved it. It's like mm -hmm. Terry didn't write this, so there, we're getting more for that that world that I, I hadn't seen before. But there mm -hmm. were things like uh, it's apocalyptic set way in the future. There's elves and trolls, and they just uh, – high production for the, the TV show. It looked wonderful, but they cut a lot of corners. Yeah. Like uh, there, there's well, a – They only have so much time. And, you know, yeah, but there's some stuff, especially in, even when it came out a few years ago, you can do stuff uh, with production to make like um like there was this fortress and it's really explained and used throughout the books. And um, when you saw it in the TV show, it was just a big valley that was desolate and a big chunk <laughs> of rock coming up. And that was the fortress. And I'm hmm. like, what? That's not it. Or trolls weren't really trolls. They were people covered with masks. And um, just some of the ways they changed some of the characters. And I'm, so I'm like, uh, yeah, you really screwed this up. You, not even close to the book. But I still liked it. You know, there's mm -hmm. people arguing about it. I'm like, you know what? If you love the fantasy series from Terry Brooks, just enjoy them both. I mean, Terry was on the board when they were producing that, and he he knows how TV is. So mm -hmm. they did change it quite a lot. They didn't keep it closer. I mean, Lord of the Rings was, of course, wasn't as, as in-depth as the books, but it was a lot closer to the books than the Shannara series was. 
No, I mean, so <clears throat> growing up, I wasn't like a huge, and it's kind of comes from what my kiddo has said before. I didn't like reading because I was forced to read certain things. Um, since a, as an adult, I have a few people that have recommended books that I'm like, oh, this is totally something I love that I can sit and binge. I love Dan Brown books. Those are, I can read a Dan Brown book in a day and a half and with not even blinking. Um, but like sometimes with books like that, um, it's nice to see the imagery. So I like both. I like books and I like movies. Uh, where, where if I'm in school or if I'm writing a book, I don't have time to necessarily read because I don't want other writing filtering into my writing. Therefore, it's nice to just sit down and watch something and not have to put in too much mental effort into reading. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I love to binge read, mm -hmm. but I'm to the point now, I think Netflix has spoiled us, that mm -hmm. I can't even read a book series until it's done. So, like, I haven't read uh, The Game of Thrones because I'll probably die before he finishes that series. So, it would drive oh. me nuts. However, I love, the, I love the TV show, except for the last season. Well, we were talking about that when we first got on here. But that's kind of a really good example of the pros and cons because with um, book series, a lot of times we're like, but the books give us so much more little hidden details for fans and little things that they can't put into a movie because there's not enough time. But like Game of Thrones are huge books, but they weren't, the series wasn't finished. I think, which honestly, once, if he ever finishes them, because I mean, I mean, does he have to finish them? I mean, the guy's what, like 90, <laughs> he may not even want to, he may be like, I don't want to write this. But he, I know that with that, like his, his book series didn't extend past like season four or five in Game of Thrones. So yep. they took their own artistic freedom and kind of went with it. That may not, I mean, he had a little like inspiration for them as far as which direction he wanted to go. But as far as that, it's kind of like there's that creative mode where sometimes things that can't be written down and explained in a writing process can be done on TV better. Like you can say, this is what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to write this out. Well, even especially if you're, uh, you have a new world or new creatures or uh, like if you're in fantasy and magical objects, you can describe it and you can see it in your mind. But I like, I like to visually see it. That's, that's why I love the Shannon Chronicles. At least they had the elf stones. They weren't really quite made the way they were described in the book. But at least I could see them. I could see what they could do. So, right. you know, I mean, I, I'm a freak about it. I even, they had like a special edition season one. You can order this and have the, the Elf Stones of Shannara book, the new version. You can have some Elf Stones and a coin <laughs> and a t-shirt. And I was like, yeah, they're just polished blue round rocks. They're not like the book, but I got to have them. So You're like, I'm just nerding out right now. Yep. Okay. So with that, um, so that's kind of like the Harry Potter stuff and Ooh. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's the Harry Potter bo books. There's so many, there's so many books or whatever, but, and there's, they even broke in the last, the last book into two movies, but even with as long as those movies are, they don't Still, capture everything. Yeah. The one thing, um, it was Hermione, Ron, uh, Harry, and what's the, the fourth kid who's in the plants. I can't believe his name just slipped. Oh, Neville. Neville. So when I watched the movie, I'm like, I'm like, in the books, he it's like the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. They are together so much. Mm -hmm. And it's just like they just stripped him out of the group. And uh, I, I I mean, I, I shouldn't say this because I'll get smacked. I lost interest. I didn't finish the other books after the movies came out, mainly because the way they did Neville in the movies. So that was like the first thing I caught. And I was like, what? You know, why did you do that to this character? And I know he was still important, but he's not important in the movies as he is the books. And right. things like that do bother me. I understand. You know, you, you have a creative team. They're trying to get this process out as quickly as possible. And you're, you're going to have changes. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you know, and that's kind of like, even, but at the same time, what is it? Is it The Hobbit? The Hobbit's not a very big book. No. But you, they, they made the, it. they could make it bigger with a movie. So you have that flip side, like like you can have like, oh, this book's only this big. Think of the, the Wizard of Oz. People don't realize those are small children's books. They're really tiny. And, and they made the Hobbit into three full length movies. 
So, I mean, they really dove in. Did they make three for I'm The Hobbit? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they made three Lord of the Rings. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I'm Lord a... of the Rings, but The Hobbit, yeah. Yeah, they made, I'm pretty sure they made three. See, now you're going to make me second guess myself. All right, and well, I'm... you're second guessing yourself because I'm not the movie expert. And it literally sounds like there's bombs going off around me right now. That's and because I'm getting ready to drop a bomb. It's talking about how there's three Hobbit movies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've watched all the Lord of the Rings, but I, and yeah, I, I we, three. okay, well, all right. See, I have not watched the Hobbit movies, so that's yeah, my husband. Cool. That's my like husband's better, yeah. expertise. That's yeah. That's the hubby's expertise there. See, if he was home, he'd be hollering and saying, "Hey, three movies." I wonder if this microphone's picking up the shaking of my house right now. No, I can't hear it. That's oh, crazy. Although so last we had week, this... it, was, it was a tornado. Yeah, well, during... this week it literally sounds like they're doing weapons testing, like down the road well that is a possibility yeah well the other night we were we had a storm and the thunder was so freaking loud dylan shot up out of bed freaked out thinking a bomb had went off it was extremely loud i was like it's just a storm go back to bed and like it's okay it's okay <laughs> <laughs> calming him down um all right, so uh, I'm thinking other pros and cons. So I wrote down some pros and cons on my notes that yeah, I got a great list here. Jamie doesn't follow. I'm following <laughs> it now. That's in front of my face. He did so not I'll do start. the assignment this week. I do like that. The first thing you put was as readers, we use our imagination. And yeah, because I also like a book when they vaguely describe a person or a character. So then you start mm -hmm. forming what they look like in your minds. Mm -hmm. So, and I've done that and like a movie will come out. I was like, wait a minute, that's not what they look like. Oh, mm -hmm. that was in my imagination. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice because if it becomes into a movie, you're like, I think of actors that might play a character. Um, and that's kind of like with, I don't know, with the Da Vinci code, uh, when you are reading that, um, what's his name? Pullman, the guy that's in, he plays like the Bill president. Pullman. Huh? Bill Pullman. The guy. Does he play the president in Independence Day? Yep. Okay. Him. I envision him as the lead actor in Da Vinci Code versus Tom Forrest Hanks. Gump. Right. So it's funny how they pick characters because I'm like, that's not even who I thought would be play that character. Um, and my husband thought, I think, the same thing. I'll have to double check with him. But I'm almost certain we both had the same character in mind when we read those books. So it's interesting how you're like, I see certain actors playing certain characters for um, for roles in books and stuff. But um, I want to mention that. Oh, like Bridgerton. I, have not, I don't have time to read the Bridgerton series. Um, I see the books. I'm like, oh, I'd love to read them. But I don't have time because I'm working on my stuff. And But I like seeing the imagery. And the beauty and the way they bring it together, you know. So I, I probably wouldn't. I honestly probably wouldn't be interested in reading Bridgerton, but I, I like watching it if that makes sense. Well, it's the same thing with Game of Thrones. I, w I would even go back and rewatch it. As much as I hate the last season, I'd still do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I even remember Daniel uh, because when we started writing fantasy years ago. He's like, you really need to get into Game of Thrones, and, and I like I got the first book in the series and. I'm trying to read and uh, I mean, he's a great author, but it's just so long and detailed. And I'm like, I just want to get into the action and keep moving. Yeah, that's yeah. I that, that's, that has to do with the preference of the reader, you know, like with their preference for whether they want more lots and lots of uh, as long as it's not word vomit, like we've talked where it's just like, yeah, you're describing you're you're taking me through a fantasy world. There's going to be a little bit more description in that. Um, but something I wrote on our notes, like as a huge pro for books versus movies is that books are a great way to stimulate your mind. If you have anxiety, um, there is a great article I read in college and, um, it talks about the stimulation that books can give you to help you control your anxiety. And then recently there was a, like a Instagram video where they're like, doctors are saying, if you have anxiety or overwhelmed, you need to take in one of those uh, warheads, like a high powered, sour warhead type thing. And your brain can only process one or the other. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool because I hate warheads. My grandson loves them He's, and he calls me grand dude. Come on, dude. Come on. I'm like, grand I'm dude. So. And so he'll take one and I, and he, I absolutely laughs because I'm like, you get through that first little layer and then, yeah. and then it's sour for hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that that's kind of a huge pro is like keeping the brain stimulated and keeping the mind imagining when taking it away. I mean, people always like it takes you to a different world. It absolutely does if it's done right. Um, it takes you to a different world. So that is a huge pro when it comes to uh, books. And you can pace yourself, whereas a, a movie or something, I mean, obviously you can turn it off, but you I of- I remember buying some hardbacks for some Terry Brooks books. Uh, like if he had uh, Sword, Elf Stones, and Wish Songs, Shannara, they put them in one big hardback. And mm-hmm. I would sit here and I would read and read and read. But in uh, those fantasy books, like they're always on a quest. They're like, yes, and they pulled out some ale and some stale bread and some cheese and some nuts. And so I'm grabbing. I'd go and get like all that. I'd have um, – jerky nuts and i'd be eating the cheese cubes as i'm reading the book so yes it would pull me in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i'm gonna call my husband out on this because one of the cons i have for um for books versus movie stuff is that if you watch the movie so you like and we've mentioned this in the beginning of this podcast episode was you can lose some of the character traits and developments of the character. And like you lost Neville or you lose certain things about characters that you it's like, Oh yeah. in the book, they tell more about this and explain and they only maybe do a hint to it in the movie. And the like the lay watcher may not understand what it means versus the reader who's watching it would understand more. Um, but I'm going to call my husband out because when I was pregnant with the twins, like I, I loved Harry Potter. I didn't have time to read the books. My youngest or not my youngest, my oldest, she read the books, but I was pregnant with the twins and, uh, he was out in California. I was in Ohio. Uh, we're tr- he was heading back to California as far as they were getting that process to happen. But, um, he decided to read the last two books. Okay. And knew the ultimate fate of Harry Potter. And I did not because I didn't have time. I was running a salon. I was pregnant with twins. I was, you know, whatever. That's what I- my wife did too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he, oh yeah. So he read those and then like didn't even know how to pronounce certain names. I'm like, well, you're not a true family. <laughs> because there was a movie coming out and I was like, oh my gosh. I remember it was very frustrated with him at the time. Very frustrated. Like, and he was like, yeah, I know the ultimate fate. I'm like, you know what? Okay. Uh, well, you know, but at the same time, on the flip, so talking about ultimate fates of characters, I remember, and I put this in my notes with Twilight, that. I'd read the book series. I had several friends who'd read the book series, but then I had some friends who had not read the book series, but we would go watch the movies together when they came out. And I remember distinctly in the last movie, um, and I'm spoiler alert. If you've not read them, you're, you're too late because these books have been out forever. The movies have been out forever, but in the last scenes where the Volturi are, are fighting some of the, the, uh, in vamp- Twilight yeah, and the vampires and the werewolves and stuff like that. You see this fight scene happening, and the very first person they kill is Carlisle, and, you're, and the whole theater was like, books. like you hear this whole like like you hear people like freaking out, and this fight scene's going on, and people that you didn't think would die die, and all these things are happening, and you're like, oh my gosh, like you felt like like as an empath, you could feel everybody's like. That's not, it can't be real. They can't be real. Yeah. Like everybody's just like freaking out what's happening. This this is not in the books. Well, and and so everybody's freaking out. And then it's just like like that. You realize Alice gave a vision to one of the Volturi and said, This is your outcome. You die if you take this path. And it all goes back to normal and everybody's alive. And you're like, yep. ah, that was great. <laughs> and then like, but look what Walking Dead did, you know, yeah. even with the comic books, they killed off Carl and they're like, mm-hmm. what? And, every, and I got to be honest, just so all you writers know, I have not watched a, a episode past Carl dying. I was like, how I haven't watched it past then. I'm like, yeah, what? that one got me too. I'm like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. I was already freaking out the first time when he was underneath that dumpster. And like, he's not going to, there's not going to survive. And when that happened with the, the ball bat, I'm like, yeah, well, we kept on. And then, uh, yeah, Carl did it for me. So... But so that was what I was trying to say with the Twilight one with Stephanie Meyer said there was she wanted to do that, essentially, but she didn't want didn't, it's kind of hard to write it that way. I can imagine like you having like a change. Some people could probably write that like flip of time. But in the way that she wrote the book, it was very hard to do that perspective because a lot of the book was from a certain person's perspective from mostly uh, Bella's perspective. Yep. In the book. So it'd be very hard to switch perspectives. Of, so. 
yeah because she would yeah it, it, it so I, I really like how she did it in the movie because it did flip you a little bit but i remember the 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 gas in the theater so you get as a as a, a writer you write stuff and even the writing the way it was done in the beginning uh without the flip on the movie was ama- it was great for me so like when she had a lot of control in her movie by that point she was able to have a little bit of artistic freedom so that can be a plus for writers as they write something you know they want to put it on the screen but it's kind of like how do you put it on the screen especially to pull people in and they're like yeah. they weren't expecting that so yes yeah. but i mean at the end of the day you see so many people online uh, arguing and starting fights over this the book the movie and it just just enjoy it for what it is. What mm-hmm. it, you know, if your favorite author didn't get a chance to have a movie out or a television show, uh, think of it from that perspective. At least you got it. Even mm-hmm. if it doesn't meet up to your standards, it's never going to meet everybody's standards. Mm-hmm. And they're always going to have to thin it out in some aspect to make it work on film. They, again, you just don't have enough time to cover a 400-page book in two hours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 you know something that, um, something that I like sometimes when I'm reading is I don't like lo- I don't like long drawn out drawn out chapters. I like to be take me there and and do it like in just small bits or whatever. Um, but I like books that are written like they're playing out like a movie. But that's yeah. how I, I I like books like that. Like Dan Brown writes like that. <laughs> What? I thought you're like speaking of that. Oh no, know? no, I'm not to that part yet. No, no. no, I wasn't there yet. I was like, that's not oh. at the bottom of the list, there, Jamie. <laughs> you just hold your horses, you sounds just like me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So something I have on my notes that um, I was thinking was movie lines. We talked about forever lines and books, but movie lines and TV lines that stick with you through book series are maybe different sometimes with like what they say their conversation might be different be like no this is what they really said so there can be like a little mudding and the reading and what you read versus what they use creatively on screen yes and uh i mean that makes sense and i can think of a million of them and none of them come to mind all the comic books like how do they, they do that like oh you know whenever superman killed zod and like superman would never do that People like we're up in an uproar, you know, or if they change, change how certain things are said or done in Star Wars, they in an uproar, like how they would, how that would be just in a movie or um, the Harry Potter are big ones for that, too. I seen a video the other day. This they were in high school and this kid, kind of a skinny kid, there's a big boy sitting down and he's like, he's got a Star Wars shirt on. He looks like he's like, take it back. And I guess the kid said in there, uh, he said, take what back? I guess he said something about Star Wars sucked. He, the, the big kid didn't like it. And the, the kids were like, like all mad about it. And I'm like, this is how outraged some fans get over this. Mm-hmm. I mean, life's too short. Enjoy mm-hmm. it. You know, oh. everybody, if you love a character, whether it's Superman or, you know, or Walking Dead or whatever, or Twilight. Some people hate Twilight. Those are the stupidest mm-hmm. movies ever. I hate them. I hate them. Well, they're absolutely corny now that I go back and watch them. But at the same time, it's it is a kind of like a a tradition now with me and my girl, my daughters uh, that watch it with me. Um, It's just something that we have together. And I don't know. They when you watch the first ones, you're like, these are so corny. How did I ever love these? But then you're like, they're but they're at the same time. You get you get it. It's kind of like you're bonded to it. But it's all entertainment. So what? Yes. You know, if you if you like it, who cares? Just enjoy yeah. it. And if the next person can't stand what you like, so what? Yeah. Just enjoy I mean, the I book. I like her writing. I love the way she writes because she writes like the way I like to read stuff. So that's I mean, whatever. To each your own. Um. I think I'm just going to shave my face because every time I drink water, I have like tons of water droplets up here. And I'm watching me on podcast. I'm constantly doing this. People probably think it's my ADHD, but it probably is part of that too. So that's you're always adju- you're drinking water. You're adjusting in your seat. I'm, I can't, I can't sit your- still. And I'm not even on caffeine. My brain's always going. You got, you got ants in your pants? Yes, I do. And thongs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and millions of cats. Yes. Speaking of which, we have yes. this one bingo. I love little bingo. And she likes to go outside 
and she'll disappear for a day or two. She likes to go in the woods. She'd been going four days. And I'm like, she's gone. I mean, we are heart sick. And this morning I'm walking up the stairs um, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just saying, please, please, why don't you come back? And I hear Meryl and she's at the door. <laughs> so when you said bingo, I was like, oh man, have you hit the age where you're playing bingo now every day? No, but I did that back in the, t my wife liked it back in the I 20s. I did it in my 20s. <laughs> okay. See? I even had my own little doppers. Yeah, me too. I think it was drunken bingo. I can't remember. There's a lot I don't of know. Mine, mine wasn't drunken because I took Sky with me and we'd go have like, you know, the sloppy joes and stuff that they had there and we played bingo and have fun. Yep. I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. Indeed. There's a ton of, there's actual bingo. Like when we were in Ohio, there were people like, oh yeah, Monday night at the, at yeah. the lodge is bingo or whatever. You'd go to a specific place. It's like the state sport. <laughs> But well, he has to literally have buildings that say bingo, real like it's yes. an actual building. Like I'm like, they pay for yes. these facilities to have bingo nonstop, seven days a week. It's crazy. It is. It is. Uh. All right, now to kind of uh, finish out this episode, how do we write our stories? You go first. Well, you know, it's funny. We came up, Daniel Middleton from Scribe Freelance and I came up with years ago writing fiction together but he's like you know i think we ought to write them like you know how long it would take to watch a movie or watch a television show and i'll be like oh that is so cool because what if you wrote a book mm -hmm. and it blew up and they wanted to make a movie out of it <laughs> and they want to thin it out but they realize all the dialogue's already there the scenes are tight I don't really need to thin it out much more. It's already scene by scene. It's easy, and we can just really turn it into a transcript for a movie or a television show. Mm -hmm. So with that said, of course, some writers can come along, and they can still screw up your story. So I'm not saying it won't happen. But uh, we started writing movie books, which honestly, I think the longest movie book in pages we had is maybe 140 pages. They could be as little as 90 pages. But we, we tell the story. We get it in and out. And I like to do trilogies. So you could really, and eventually we're going to do this because uh, we're on Kindle now. We'll, we'll put like three books together and make one print book, which mm -hmm. would be three or 400 pages long. The TV books that I write, I love them actually more. Like right now I'm working on Age of the Sigil. And uh, it has 13 episodes or 13 chapters that are between four to 5,000 words a piece. And it gets in and out. It lets you develop the characters. We have plenty of story arcs. So it's kind of like, oh, my favorite television shows on Netflix. I want to binge watch this. You know, it's uh, Little Sheldon or something. And it's our young, young Sheldon. I think that's the name of it. I'm watching it right now. And you're done in 20 minutes. So you literally could be done with a chapter or an episode of this TV book series in 20 minutes, where a book mm -hmm. you're done in a couple hours. So um, that was just my approach. You know, I've always in the back of my mind thought some of the books I'm writing would make for good Netflix series. Um, how could I keep them from destroying what I see, like really thinning it out. How could I make it easier for them so they don't have to do that right. to fit in the time slot you're allotted for a television show or a movie? So, mm -hmm. And that's probably how I always write. I don't think I could – I mean I've written big books because it's really – if I write like The Crisis Artifact, which is in three movies, it's really one big book. It's one huge story. I'm just right. breaking it down. And if you remember when you first came to me with Crystal Gate – that was my mentality. That's what I was mm -hmm. trying to do with your book. And you're like, no, I need it to be 1,600 pages long or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, but and then I got ganged on because Rich agreed with you. It's like, nope, it's got to stay together. So mm -hmm. it was cool. Well, because I didn't write mine to be broke apart, though. I wrote mine to be, you know, so you're, you're writing yours where you have breaks and like cutoffs. And yeah, like and that. I was actually coming from the mentality. I already saw what. Amazon hadn't reached the point where they were doing Kindle shorts or tiny books. Everything mm -hmm. was like the more pages you have, the more amazing the book is. They weren't these tiny little 20 page books or whatever. So this was like 2008 when Daniel and I started 2007, seven, eight. And we saw it. We're like, Hey, you remember serials like the old television shows? Like, yes. He said, I'm telling you that's where it's leading with Netflix being so popular at the time. Of course, you had to order CDs. And I think at that time, they just came out with the streaming service. Oh, I could, totally <laughs> forgot that's what Netflix started as. I forgot that you would order the CD and you'd have so many days to return it. Yeah, because I'm like, how in the world can they make money 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, as cheap as they were with shipping and everything, but um, you know they finally had an end game and it worked. Yep. Yeah, and now they stream, you know, the roast of Tom Brady's on there, (laughs) 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 which was hilarious. Yep. 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 So I write mine as I would consider Dan Brown scenes. So I don't write my scenes short and and like more tight scenes like you say you do mine are more expounded but i do write mine as each chapter is a scene change um or a a new perspective but i tend to uh when i'm writing uh make sure that if i'm if i were filming this how do i want my character to see the room how what do i want them to first see do i want them to see the person over here i want them to go in the room and feel cold so i try to go when i'm writing as if you're watching a movie I guess, b- basically, do you get the eerie feeling when I, when I do it? Are you, are you spanning out from the clouds that are dissipating in the sky? Like what is the, what would the filmer or the the photographer or the movie, you know, cinematic version of this look like? Yeah. You just get the director's cut, the four hour movie. I just want to get in, the, in and out of the theater and eat me a couple of Twizzlers and be done and on my way. So so everyone's asking, Jamie, how'd you write so many books? Well, I, I've written like 60 books, but really, if you count up the pages, it's only really 22. So it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't well, in, matter. In a, in a sense, you are doing graphic novels without pictures. Yeah, I like that. That's actually uh, a cool thing. And you know how my ADHD kicks in every once in a while? What is on your top shelf above your books? Because it reminds me of Shot's Weasel wine glass boxes. Um. This one right here has all my bathing suits in it. Okay. I was thinking, do you have wine glasses up here (laughs) when I come down so I can be screaming at them? No. And then this one has all of my t-shirts in it. Okay. And I don't, I think this one is like, think like, I don't know what's in that one. I, it's just decorative. I didn't want to have like, it's just sitting on my shelf. You should put wine glasses in it. In my bedroom? Yeah. Just for when I come to visit. Okay. So okay. A, Here's the wine glasses that yeah, you needed. Yeah, some shattering party. All right. Mm. If you ever do visit, there is a really nice uh, wine Beast. bar. Yeah, well, yeah. But there's a wine bar that's like eclectic. It's got like kind of like the different types of chairs. And it's like in the little town of Shalimar. And it's called the Twisted Grape. They have different types of wines from all over. Like they have uh, Moscato's from... Uh, California or Australia, or, you know, like you can get different. Like, which one would you like to have? I was that like, would oh, be cool. Uh, I don't adult. really drink wine. I will though, but I'd probably drive nuts because I'll be like, "Can I try that wine glass?" Ding, ding, ding. Oh, <laughs> you would be like, "Ding, ding, ding!" Oh, this is this. <laughs> I think mean, don't pay attention to him. <laughs> you know, some people are watching this podcast are like, "What is wrong with this dude? What is he even talking about? Why would he flick a wine glass?" Not even going to tell you. If you don't know by now. Not even if you know, you know. Yep, if you know, you know. <laughs> if not, Google Jamie Vendera. <laughs> so, we both write in a cinematic way. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, she, she's much deeper. And, I mean, to be honest, that's most authors. You know, mm-hmm. this is just something back in 08 that, uh, you know, Scribe Freelance Partner, uh, for my original partner for 7-Eleven Press and I came up with to just get you in and out of the story. So you could have that break from, from life and from stress. You're like, oh, I can sit in the chair. Oh, I got a new book from Jamie. Uh, if I want to eat dinner, and I can read this before I go to bed. Be done mm-hmm. with it, and have that you, little adventure. Have you thought about putting any of your books on Audible? Uh, yeah, we I have several of them on Audible already. You do? Yes. Why didn't I know this? Because at, back at the time, it's a lot different now. You could find a partner to put the book out, and they would they would do the voiceover and this was probably 2012 and we didn't see a lot from it and it wasn't as popular as it is now and now it's so easy even with ai you could have any voice to do it so Mm -hmm. that's actually something i was going to talk to you about because we should probably pursue that and put all these books yeah i plan to do that with um canvas which we could talk about that in the next episode because we're going to talk about some stuff in the next episode that's going to be our our struggles and our excitements so sweet okay all but right until that episode we let's will finish let's finish this one. Oh, i thought we were done yeah all <laughs> right thank you for listening to the always right podcast <laughs>
you can find us at alwayswritepodcast.com. You can email us at alwayswritepodcast at gmail.com. So whether you want to watch us on YouTube or listen to us on Spotify, uh, we have all those little tiny buttons on the bottom of our webpage that you mm-hmm. can click on. Uh, so you can listen, watch us, however it, that you see fit. Yes. All right. You can also click over there on Jim Vendera Publishing on the same site, and you can see any of the books that we've put out or any of the other authors that we have on Vendera and check out some of their uh, their books that they've got available. So, all right. Until next time, I am author Carissa DeLay. And I'm author Jamie Vendera, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Thanks for listening.